Hello, my name is Alex Smith. I am the Chief Science Officer of Nanosurface Biomedical, and I'm here today to talk to you about Nanosurfaces, a biomimetic cell culture platform for enhancing cell biology studies. For anyone familiar with in vitro cell culture, flat, conventional culture dishes offer a fundamentally non-biological, non-biomimetic system for maintaining human and mammalian cell types. Cells maintained on flat surfaces lack the structural cues that are present within native tissues and this leads to incorrect structural development which can negatively impact the functional performance uh, of those cells when progressing to end-stage assays. Critically when using uh, stem cell derived sources we see that cells on flat surfaces tend to arrest in developmental phenotypic stages um, presenting phenotypes more representative of embryonic or neonatal stages of development and this is critically important and limiting for uh, endpoint assays looking at evaluating drug efficacy and or disease progression in adult tissues as looking at developmental cells in vitro is unlikely to give us an accurate representation of the way adult cells will respond to therapeutic or pathological challenge. With that in mind, we have spent the last 10 years evaluating the structural environment of mammalian tissues and designing cell culture where that recapitulates those structural cues to enhance cellular development in vitro. We can see here basement membrane with highly organized extracellular matrix fibers. These fibers provide structural cues in both orientation and dimension sizes to the surrounding cells. Similarly, in D we see the organization of cardiac tissue aligned uniaxially to facilitate directed contraction of the tissue. If we focus on extracellular matrix fibers, we see also that the extracellular matrix, like the cells that they surround, are highly oriented and provide uniaxial structural cues promoting the correct functionality of that tissue. In cancer cells, the progression of the metastatic tissue is predicated on the provision of correct extracellular matrix guidance cues and matrix tissues tend to migrate more successfully on oriented fibers. So both for healthy somatic cells and also in certain disease states, the provision of extracellular guidance cues that are both uniaxial and nanotopographic in range is important for facilitating correct function of those cells. With this in mind, Nanosurface Biomedical has commercialized single well, six well and 96 well plate nanotopographic substrates providing culture wear that imparts structural anisotropy as well as nanoscale binding cues to cell cultures, enabling the structural and functional development of a wide range of somatic cell types. Nanoscale topographic surfaces provide limited binding sites for cells plated on top. We can see here cardiomyocytes applied to nanosurface uh, topographies and the inability for the cells to penetrate to the bottom of the groove limits the binding sites to the tops of the ridges presented. Focal adhesion complexes therefore linearize in parallel with the underlying topography. We can see here the formation of focal adhesion complexes in a single orientation and this presentation of binding sites exerts control over the directional development of the cytoskeleton within the cell. Using thermoresponsive dynamic cell culture substrates that change orientation of their topography in response to changes in temperature, we've been able to demonstrate that the formation of focal adhesion complexes within cells cultured on these surfaces is not static but dynamic. In response to the change in topography, we see a reorganization of the focal adhesion complexes to reorient the cells in line with the alteration in substrate geometry. In this instance, a 90 degree shift in substrate orientation promoted a reorganization of the focal adhesion complexes in line with the new substrate orientations. So what we observe is that as the cells dynamically respond to these substrates, we can enhance their development by providing substrates that accurately recapitulate the structural environment that these cells would, would observe in vivo. The data on the previous slide is from rodent tissue. We have subsequently expanded our data set to include data from human embryonic and induced pluripotent derived stem cell sources. Here we can see human stem cell derived cardiomyocytes on flat and nanopattern surfaces and again we see the reorganization of the cytoskeletal structure to promote a uniaxial tissue that is more representative of the native microenvironment. 
In addition to alignment, the provision of the subcellular structural cues enhances the overall structural development of the cells so that we see an improvement in both cell area as well as length and width ratios. Critically, when looking at sarcomere length, we see an optimal pattern geometry in terms of enhancing contractile potential in these cells around 800 nanometers. Comparing 800 nanometer results to results achieved on 750 and 900 nanometer topographies demonstrates an optimal geometry for the promotion of structural development in cardiomyocytes. This is of particular importance when comparing this technology to competitors such as electrospun fibers, which possess an inherent variability in terms of the topographic dimensions presented to cells. When we see that differences of 50 to 100 nanometers can have a profound and significant impact on structural development, the variability of substrate dimensions is something that cannot be afforded if optimal structural development is desired. These improvements in structural development in cardiomyocytes translate into subsequent improvements in functional performance. We see here uh, optical mapping data showing the propagation pattern on flat and nanopattern surfaces and while flat surfaces promote a radial propagation pattern from the point of activation, we see more anisotropic conduction patterns in nanopattern cardiomyocytes creating a system that is more representative of action potential propagation within myocardial tissue. In addition to cardiomyocytes, we've investigated the potential for nanosurface dishes to enhance the structural and functional development of other cell types. Here we look at uh, skeletal muscle cells. In addition to improvements in alignment of skeletal muscle myofibers, we also see that nanosurfaces provide cues that upregulate the expression of myogenic regulatory factors critical to enhancing the differentiation of skeletal muscle in vitro. We see an improvement in the number of nuclei recruited to each individual myotube, an indication of hypertrophy within these tissues. Analysis of endothelial cell organization shows that such cells are similarly capable of reorganizing in response to nanotopographic substrates. We see in A and B here by comparison that the provision of nanosurface cues enhances the, the uniformity and regularity of endothelial cell development. The provision of nanosurface cues in this instance promotes the development of a cobblestone morphology, creating an in vitro environment that more closely recapitulates the in vivo condition. Of critical importance, we've also conducted studies comparing different substrate geometries. We can see in the lower panel here a comparison of 1 to 1, 800 nanometer groove and width ratios to a 1 to 2 ratio and a 1 to 5 ratio. The ability for cells to polarize in parallel with the underlying topography is significantly increased when a 1 to 1 ratio is used. This point is of importance for researchers attempting to exert a high degree of control over the polarity of their cells. Analysis of smooth muscle cell development in vitro shows that, like the other cells we have discussed already, as we've seen for other cell types, the culture of smooth muscle cells on nanosurfaces enhances the polarization of the cultured cells, creating a, an in vitro tissue that is more representative of the in vivo condition. Moreover, the culture of smooth muscle cells on nanopattern surfaces enhances the expression of genes responsible for regulating mechanotransduction pathways in these cells. We've done investigations of softer and more stiff substrates to demonstrate that both the pre presentation of nanotopography as well as stiffness cues act synergistically to enhance cellular response to their extracellular environment. In addition to healthy somatic cell types, we have conducted studies of metastatic cancer lines to demonstrate that the migration potential of cells on nanopattern surfaces is significantly enhanced when compared with flat alternatives. This slide provides data from MCF10A cells, a breast epithelial line, as well as a PIK3 kinase metastatic mutant on both flat and nanopattern surfaces. One of the major problems with the maintenance of cancer cell lines on flat surfaces is that cells tend to lose their migratory ability over time in culture. The data we present here demonstrates that the maintenance of those same cell lines on nanosurfaces not only enhances their ability to migrate on these surfaces but also increases the time that that migratory ability persists in vitro. We can see from this time-lapse imaging that although cells do migrate to a certain degree on flat surfaces, their capacity to migrate over significant distances is significantly improved on nanopattern surfaces. This is of significant value to investigators seeking to test potential drugs to 
target or to alleviate cancer through inhibition, inhibition of uh, migratory ability. So to conclude, nanotopography offers a cost-effective and reproducible means to promote cell development and function in vitro. We've provided data to demonstrate that the utilization of these surfaces in vitro enhances the structural development of cells as well as contractile function in muscle cells. We can exert controlled migratory abilities in cancer and wild-type epithelial cell lines, as well as alter the cytokine production in specific cell types. I've done my best to provide an overview of the potential of our technology. However, due to time constraints, I haven't been able to touch on every application of this technology. And certainly we have shown, we have data to demonstrate the ability for our substrates to enhance stem cell differentiation down sp specific somatic lines. And I encourage you to come and talk to us if you would like more information about how our surfaces could impact your specific application. The image here is a representation of our new 96 well plate format. We're currently accepting pre-orders with a discount for those that come and place the order at our booth. We are located at booth 1003 and I encourage you all to come and talk to us if you have any further questions about the specific applications for your research. In addition, on Tuesday we will be presenting a number of posters where we highlight the potential for our technology to enhance the study of multiple different cellular effects in vitro.